Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be taking a look at Grey Zone Warfare. So this is a game that has been on my radar for the past few months. I've seen various videos on this from people on YouTube. I've seen a lot of people tweeting out about this as well. So it looks like a very promising game. So this is a new Milsim game that's coming up. It is a PvEVP extraction shooter although not extraction in the way you think of it in tarkov where you sort of load up into a level extract out and sort of go back to the main menu it is in a living breathing world spanning a 42 square kilometer island and whilst you do use a little bird to extract and get back to your base of operations once you log off i believe the world is sort of living and breathing in a way that it continues to go on without you even being there However, today I have some new information to share with you guys from the team at Madfinger Games, and this time it's going to be all about the combat experience, so how weapons work within the game, how the rounds affect the environment and indeed your target, and how your soldier reacts to those rounds. So they say here, prepare for an immersive combat experience where damage goes beyond mere numbers found in other games. Instead, precise real-world values and an authentic ballistics model determine each weapon's damage, autonomously calculating outcomes based on this data. It's all about mastering the art of the perfect shot and understanding its impact on the human body. So it seems like they've got a meticulously crafted system here that sort of strikes a balance between hardcore realism and accessible gameplay and it's going to offer a, a gradual learning curve that you know should be easy to understand but challenging to truly master obviously you're going to have to think about where you place your shots and you guys are going to be seeing some examples of this in the background video here so each projectile's impact and effectiveness are determined by various factors including energy velocity and penetration capabilities and how these factors influence the damage potential of different types of ammunition as well and each type of ammunition of course is going to have its own unique characteristics and real life properties derived from the materials comprising the, the jacket and the core so you're going to have soft point rounds you're going to have full metal jacket rounds you're going to get armor piercing hollow point rounds each of these of course with their own specified use cases and their projection simulation here actually accounts for the jacket damage and the attachments it accounts for core deformation known as mushrooming as well as disintegration and thirdly it considers the bullets rotation and it incorporates the ricochet and projectile destabilization physics so this is some really in-depth stuff i'm going to preface this by saying that i've never really been a huge milsim guy i haven't really played squad i haven't played escape from tarkov but this is the first time i'm seeing a lot of this stuff in a video game and it's kind of blowing my mind and you guys have been watching some of the examples here in the background of how this affects the human body or the body of the soldier within the game calculating both temporary and permanent cavities in the soft tissues and their impacts and you will indeed notice, for example, with the full metal jacket rounds here, once he penetrates this wood with the round, it starts to mushroom out a little bit more, sort of similar to a hollow point round. And the hollow point round at the end here just absolutely decimates that gel. They also have a really nice demonstration of the penetrative capabilities of different ammunition types. So here you can see a demo when you're comparing full metal jacket rounds as opposed to tungsten carbide ammunition, aka armor piercing. And you can see with the first round here, the first one bounces off that first sheet of metal because he's got it chambered from the previous magazine but the rest of them have no problem at all piercing through all six of these double sided sheets of metal so this is going to be incredibly good against armored opponents but at the same time you know maybe these rounds aren't going to do as much damage as for example a hollow point bullet would do or perhaps if you've got a hostage that you're planning to rescue within a house and they're on the other side of the wall, well, maybe you don't want to be taking armor-piercing rounds or something that's going to fly straight through a brittle wall. Now, these showcases here in the ballistics gel, these are not just for show. This is a demonstration of how they actually will affect your soldier's body within the game. And basically here, you can see the results of all of these things that the game is calculating. All of the energy fluctuations, the bullets rotation, the deformation, the tumbling, alterations in behavior after penetrating a barrier. And all these different types of things are taken into account. And it is the same story with the ricochets here. 
So here you can see a demo of them shooting some steel barriers or steel blocks here as opposed to wood and as you'll notice the softer materials like wood result in a wider ricochet angle and lower velocity compared to a hard material like steel. Furthermore, the model can also replicate the behavior of projectiles hitting water. So this occurs when the particular angle is consistently maintained and as you'll see here if this angle is exceeded too greatly the object doesn't bounce off the surface but it instead enters the water and this is the first game at least for me that i've ever seen showcase this kind of realism when it comes to bullet physics however it doesn't stop there because they've also got a thing or two to say about recoil so mastering recoil is complex and it is also influenced by various factors including muzzle velocity and the weight of your firearm and its ammunition. So with each shot fired, your weapon's weight actually decreases, thus changing how the recoil feels. So for example, there can be up to a 10% difference in recoil control with an AR-15, depending on whether you're shooting with a full magazine or the last bullet. Additionally, the movement of the bolt mechanism within the firearm contributes to its realism as well so when firing the bolt moves backwards intensifying the felt recoil and causing the firearm to move in your hands however as the bolt returns to its original position it sort of stabilizes the firearm to some extent and this doesn't happen with simple bolt action rifles uh, without this automatic functionality now as a special forces operative your training does help you manage recoil during shooting but this adjustment varies with each shot making each experience unique and additionally your stamina level is also going to be crucial you know if you've been running or jumping your stability will be compromised and prolonged aiming can also cause your aim to waver and then you've got to keep an eye on your overall energy and arm strength to maintain peak performance and accuracy and finally here let's take a look at how these rounds actually affect the body and armor so unlike most other games where you get shot in the arm and that just does a certain numerical value of damage and you get shot in the chest and it does a bit more and then you get shot in the head and it does even more, in Grey Zone Warfare, your operative has a detailed human anatomy with organs, bones, and structures that accurately portray injury-based cavities caused by projectiles like I was demonstrating to you guys in the ballistics gel. Now you can address these injuries with gamified treatments uh, that you guys have probably seen in, in previous videos. So depending on the type of injury, you are gonna need to have a, a different reagent essentially to cure that affliction. But the behavior of the bullet upon hitting armor varies dynamically as well. So depending on the ammunition's properties, especially its penetration capability, it can lead to a diverse outcome against an armored opponent. So a bullet might ricochet harmlessly off of the armor. It may penetrate it to cause significant damage and balloon outwards inside the body, as we saw in the ballistics gel, or it may simply pierce through only to be stopped by the backplate. And each of these scenarios is meticulously being calculated within the game. However, I do wonder a little bit how the net code of the game is going to work. You are gonna have a maximum of 48 players in, in one arena game, whatever you wanna call it, at a time. And coming from the Battlefield franchise and seeing how the net code can cause you to die behind corners and sometimes not kill an opponent or not hit an opponent when it really feels like you should have done, I do wonder how that's going to affect a game like Grey Zone Warfare where it doesn't just matter whether you hit an opponent or not, it also takes into account the angle. Is that round going to ricochet off his armor? Is it going to penetrate through his armor? There are just so many more variables here, but hopefully they're gonna have something to say about that in a future blog. So severe injuries like bleeding and damage to your organs will actually also affect your character's body and mind. It'll make it harder for you to perform well in combat and various things can happen during action, such as you can get limited movement, worsened aim, impaired hearing, and sometimes you inadvertently make noise, right? Because you're injured, maybe your, your soldier kind of lets out a groan or something, potentially revealing your location to enemies. In more severe cases, these injuries can cause blood loss, which may affect your vision or even lead to a coma from which only other friendly PMCs can save you. So most of the time you should be able to bandage yourself up and, and keep yourself going as long as you have the necessary materials. But sometimes you are gonna to need to be picked up by your teammates otherwise you're just gonna be done for. Now I know fans of Grey Zone Warfare have been waiting a long time to see the first debut of some raw footage revealed to the public. Up until now, we've just had sort of scripted little teaser 
bit of uh, footage that I'm showing you guys here in the background, but I am excited to be able to tell you guys that this March, Brazen Warfare fans are finally going to get their first taste of raw footage, so this is going to reveal a bit of a glimpse into what lies ahead, bringing us one step closer to the eventual release into early access. So I gotta tell you guys, I am getting pretty stoked for this game. It looks like a, a lot of fun. I've never really been too much into squad in games like that because of the PvP aspect. It's always sort of been one of those games that it feels like unless you're an expert in the game, there's no point playing it at all. But with this game having a lot more of a PvE focus, definitely with some other players mixed in there though, I can certainly see myself playing this, especially on co-op uh, with some friends. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I will definitely be doing some more content on this game in the future. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this one. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.